Hello everyone, I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to format and export your Final Cut Pro project as an Instagram story or a TikTok video. Let's get started. All right, so in the past, Final Cut has made this quite a complicated process, having to create new projects and then manually conforming each clip to the new aspect ratio. Thankfully, in a recent update, Final Cut has made this process far more time efficient, and I'll be showing you this newer, faster method today. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is find a project that you want to export as an Instagram story or a TikTok video. Now in my case, in my timeline, I have a fashion film that I shot that will serve perfectly as an example for this tutorial. The next thing to consider is where you want to upload this project as different platforms have different recording limits. For example, an Instagram story must be no longer than 15 seconds, whereas a TikTok video can be up to 60 seconds. Let's say I want to format and export this project as an Instagram story. At the moment, the video is too long being over a minute in length. Of course, I can shorten the project right here in the timeline. However, what I recommend doing is duplicating the project and then creating a shorter version of that, allowing you to have both the full version as well as the shortened version in your library. So to do this, we're gonna go over into the projects menu, select our project, right click and click duplicate project. As the name implies, this will duplicate the project, allowing you to have two full length versions of the project. Then you can go ahead and shorten the duplicate project to match the specifications of the story or TikTok video, which is exactly what I've done here. As you can see, I have a second duplicate version of this project, which I've shortened to 15 seconds in length. You'll see this is just below 15 seconds here at 14 seconds and 59 frames, making it perfect for an Instagram story. Great. So now that we've shortened the project to match the required length for our chosen platform, it's now time to, of course, format it for a smartphone screen, as at the moment, this is still a 16 by 9 ratio, which is great for the web or computers or TVs, but not for smartphones. So the next step here is to go back to your project. In this case, we'll select the shortened version, right click and click on duplicate project as. From here, we're able to rename the project. Let's go ahead and rename it so we can identify this here. Let's call this IG TikTok. And then under the video format, we're gonna change from HD to vertical. Now it's important to change the resolution depending on what the original project was shot in. For example, if your original project was shot in 4K, you should switch to 2160 by 3840. However, if you shot in 1080p HD, you have to change to 1080p by 1920. You can also change the frame rate. I'm gonna leave this as is. And if you were to press okay now, Final Cut will start a new project with the correct aspect ratio, being very tall and narrow to match that of a smartphone screen. However, at this point, the footage will still be in 16 by nine, so you'll have very large pillar boxes on the top and bottom of your video. This is where the new feature from Final Cut comes in, which is called Smart Conform, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is selected. This does two things. First, Final Cut will crop into the footage to fill the space, eliminating the pillar bars on the top and bottom of the footage. And secondly, it actually intelligently chooses where to zoom in on the frame, as of course, a lot of the footage on the left and right side will be missing once zoomed into this very narrow aspect ratio. But I'll show you more on that later. For now, press OK. Now this may take a few minutes. Of course, my project is very short, so this should only take a few seconds. Here we go. If we take a look at the projects list, we now have the full original version, we have the shortened version, as well as the version formatted for Instagram or TikTok, the one we just created. Let's double click and see how it looks. Earlier when speaking about the Smart Conform feature, I mentioned that Final Cut will also intelligently zoom in or crop the footage depending on where it believes is the most important part of the frame. And I'm just gonna demonstrate that by selecting one of the clips and clicking on the transform button. You'll see that the video has not been cropped in the center. Instead, Final Cut has detected the model and slightly shifted the crop to the left in order to put her in frame. You'll see this is carried through throughout the project. You'll see here it's further to the right. And here, for example, it's very far to the left. Now, oftentimes Final Cut does a very good job at this, however, not always perfectly. So for example, this particular clip right here, you'll see it has adjusted to the right, but if we skim through this clip, the model is just a little bit too far off to the right, looks a little bit awkward. We have a lot of room here on the right of the frame, so I'd rather move her slightly to the left. Now to do this, we're gonna make sure that the clip is selected. We'll close the events menu, open up inspector, and then under the video tab, we're gonna shift it along the X axis. To do this, simply press and hold on the parameter and then move your cursor down to move it to the left or up to move the frame to the right. 
Now I'm just going to move it down a little bit here just to bring the model more into the center of the frame. Now it's important to also skim through your clip to make sure that the framing doesn't change too much as the clip plays. Go ahead and press done, close the inspector and preview. Much better. And with this I recommend checking through every clip just to make sure that this is framed exactly how you want. It is important to of course frame your clips properly but also to bear in mind of any additional elements that you may have. For example here you'll see I have a text element, this is my company name, and you'll see that this is off to the right of the frame so therefore will not be shown in this video. Now if I wanted this to be included I would open the inspector and just like with the clips drag down along the x axis to bring this into frame. Now in this particular example I don't really need the text so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Alright so once you're happy with your project and the way it looks it is now time to export and carry this over to your smartphone. To export we're going to go to the top right of the menu and under the share menu select master file. From here we have the option to rename the file and then under settings we can go ahead and change the format. Now in this case we have an audio track underneath the footage so we're going to make sure that video and audio is selected to include both. And under the video codec, I recommend selecting the H.264 codec, as this codec strikes a great balance between providing very good video quality while still maintaining a relatively small video size. This is especially important if you're uploading from a mobile device that may not have so much storage. Not to mention that social media platforms, including TikTok and Instagram, heavily compress your video, so there's really no point in exporting as ProRes or uncompressed versions, as again, this will be compressed so much to a point where you'll lose most of the quality that you gain from using a more uncompressed export. So again, as the best all-around option, I select H.264. Now from here we can go ahead and take a look and see the file size is only 71 megabytes. Now this will actually be even less once the project is exported. Go ahead and press next and let's save to the desktop. All right, so here we have our project. We can go ahead and preview it. And as you can see, the quality looks great. The framing is perfect and it is completely ready to go. Now, in this case, I'm going to be moving my project over to my iPhone. However, if you're using an Android device, I highly recommend using services such as Dropbox or WeTransfer to bring the file over. If you're on an iPhone, however, like I am, I highly recommend using AirDrop. AirDrop is great because it will send the full quality version of the video wirelessly straight to your device. Alright, so in order to transfer the video file from our Mac to the iPhone via AirDrop, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a new Finder window and click on AirDrop. From here, you're going to want to make sure that your AirDrop is discoverable by either your contacts or everyone. And then on your iPhone, you're going to want to open up Settings, scroll down to General, and then click on AirDrop. From here, you're also going to want to make sure that this is selected on either contacts only or everyone so it can be discovered by your Mac. As you can see, looking at the Finder window, we now have the iPhone appeared. And from here, we can simply click and drag the file directly from Finder onto the iPhone. The file will then transfer to your phone. This should only take a few seconds and will then automatically open up and play. Your Final Cut project is now properly formatted and ready to go for Instagram and TikTok. Thank you very much for watching this video, let me know if you have any questions and be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.